Okay, this lesson is about food chains and food webs, and we're going to look at how these interactions of food chains impact um, ecosystems at risk. So, by the end of the lesson, I can explain what a food chain and food web is and explain why they are important. So, um, when we look at ecosystems at risk and judge whether they're at risk or not and ways of looking at uh, management, we look at we look at the productivity of ecosystems. Now, um, this can be expressed in two ways. The amount of biomes, so a large naturally occurring community produced in the area, and the energy flows in that area. Both methods depend on a quantity of energy and nutrients and efficiency with which the energy and matter are incorporated into producers and passed up the food chain or web. Um, a food chain is a series of um, organisms each depending on the next as a source of food. A food web is the feeding relationship by which energy and nutrients are passed on from one species of living organism to another. So when we're looking at productivity of ecosystems, what we're basically saying is how each living organism is related to another by in, in terms of energy flow. So as, as we'll see in the next slide, um, we have presume, um, producers at the bottom of the, you know, at the start of the food chain. They um, produce, you know, plants and so on. Um, and then consumers who eat that, um, eat the producers, will, you know, eat plant life. But the energy lost out of that is really, really important because if if one ecosystem just relies on one particular food source or a low energy producing um, consumer or producer that has an impact on the ecosystem about how long it can um, survive. Um, for example, if we're looking at a koala, um, they're becoming more and more endangered because one, their ecosystems are being destroyed by humans, um, but two, their energy source. A lot of koalas only eat certain um, eucalyptus leaves and, you, and the energy in the eucalyptus leaf is very low. Um, also, because of the um, lack of energy in them, it, it um, stops them from being active. So a lot of people um, think that um, koalas are lazy because they're normally drunk from eating so much eucalyptus leaves, but in fact they're not. It's because the energy they get from those leaves is very little. And when we're talking about productivity and energy flows, at each level, energy decreases so if you're a producer and you're eating um, or you know you're at that low level the energy that you've got is smaller and then when you're a consumer if you're not eating um, you know higher energy producers the energy gets lost and it's the same with decom de um, decomposers so every food chain every food web has got a mixture of producers consumers and decomposers um, like I said before, at uh, each level, um, energy is lost in the atmosphere, basically in the form of heat. Um, food chains are um, circular, so they recycle nutrients from producer to consumer to decompose them back to producers. This is a cycle. And organisms which share the same food um, types are said to be at the same trophic level. All right? That's really important because as soon as we go up in trophic levels, we lose energy as well. Um, producers belong to the first level and primary consumers belong to the second level, secondary consumers to the third level and so on. And I'll show you a little example of that in a minute. Um, simple food chains are very, very rare. Most food chains are complex. Why? Well, if we lived on one particular source of food that goes extinct, then we're going to become extinct. So that's why um, plants, animals have adapted to get different types of food. So uh, various elements of biome transfer energy by consuming each other. Herbivores consume plants, herbivores are consumed by carnivores. Carnivores are then consumed by large carnivores. Remember herbivore is a vegetarian, carnivore eats meat. Okay, so that's basically an explanation of the food chain, food webs and then trophic levels as well. The energy of the sun is by plants, which is then turned in carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen, and that's called photosynthesis. This process is the building block of energy in a food chain, um, as we've said before, as herbivores are consumed by carnivores and secondary carnivores and so on. Um, 
this is the pr process where we get that non-living and living environment recycling uh, throughout and that's why the biophysical em environment is so still important particularly for ecosystems at risk if we don't have that photosynthesis happening and that's related to atmosphere hydrosphere biosphere lithosphere then it's going to affect all life on earth okay and um, we have different cycles and what i'll do i'll put a little video on for each of those cycles so you know what they mean um, here's a, an example of what I've been talking about in diagrammatic form. We've got the different cycles, we've got heat being lost there, and the source of all our energy is the sun. Um, when I've talked about trophic flows, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain. So each level, um, there's more um, energy lost and more bulk is consumed. In all key systems, the number of tertiary consumers is small and the number of primary juices is high. So when we're talking about different layers, there's more producers than consumers. So if you look at humans in that diagram, we've got you know one, then we've got several fish, and then the plankton outnumbers the fish, and fish outnumber humans. So um, you can see there that there's more primary producers. Um, the diagram shows the levels of energy lost and nutrients lost at each level. Okay, um, I hope that explains what um, food chains are food webs, why they're so important, and the impact they have on ecosystems. Okay, thanks.